In this video, I will take you along to my two-week road trip in Europe. I will share with you how I was able to manage my eating and whether any failures and some tips and hacks for you to follow. Now, we are based in Tallinn, Estonia, and we made Riga, Latvia, Kaunas, Lithuania, Poznan, Poland, Berlin, Germany, then again Poland, Warsaw, and from Riga we drove back to home, Tallinn. Now, I'm not going to vlog you through all those cities, although I'm gonna show you some footage. Instead, I want to share with you how I was able to continue my living candida-free diet. There are mainly three aspects concerning food when you're traveling, especially by car. First is food for the road, what you can prep ahead. Secondly, very big important part is eating out, where you most probably will also fail one or two times. And thirdly, it's all about choosing an accommodation that allows you to prep your own easy meals. Another important aspect you should consider when traveling is staying true to your healthy routines. For example, I continue to drink my two glasses of lemon water every morning, no matter what. Secondly, I brought my yoga mat to continue having my short yoga session each morning. As you can see, the conditions sometimes were quite narrow, but it's totally doable. Let's start with food for the road. For example, I spent the whole evening prepping a huge batch of kale chips for the road, which is an excellent snack when traveling. It's light, it's lean and it's super healthy. Carrots make an awesome snack as well and you can even buy them pre-washed from supermarket. Canned lentils and peas. I wouldn't recommend uh, chickpeas or other beans unless you have an opportunity to wash them before eating. One of my favorite on-the-go foods is actually overnight oats, which doesn't exactly have to be overnight. For example, when we left Warsaw, we had a day ahead to arrive to Riga. The same morning I prepared the oats for the three of us. We even bought a big glass jar for that because my container was not big enough for for all of us. So I simply mixed together rolled oats, chia seeds, added oat milk, hot water, I think I even mixed in some goji berries and topped it with applesauce. Another very good item for the road is bread. If you are on a candida diet and need to avoid sugar, yeast, so on and so forth, then you can either bake your bread yourself or find an organic bakery that offers products suitable for your needs. For example, we were very lucky to find a super duper bakery in Riga. They had just opened three weeks prior and they only did gluten-free, yeast-free, sugar-free, all natural ingredients sourdough bread. And they used millet, buckwheat, rice and quinoa. And I absolutely made sure we stopped in Riga also on our way back because I definitely wanted to stock up on their bread. Riga is only like 350 kilometers from Tallinn so yeah it was easy to buy a few loaves and then I just uh, sliced them up when I got home and froze the pieces. I still have a few left. Now if you are on candida cleanse diet it would be very difficult for you to find a bakery. As I'm already past that I'm living candida free and a little bit of gluten uh, doesn't affect me so I'm the lucky one. I can also have rye bread and at least in Europe, uh, in northern Europe, rye bread is very common and you can get that in most bakeries. Of course you have to ask for the sugar and yeast but usually uh, in northern Europe uh, nobody puts yeast in a, a sourdough rye bread. Just to go over what we had on the road. I had the kale chips and they lasted uh, through the trip because we weren't traveling every day. And then the cabbage, the carrots, uh, the bread. I always made myself uh, matcha to go in a cup and then I had a thermos. I made a green tea in a thermos when the matcha finished and of course we had water. Uh, we also bought some salad 
it. It lasts for a day and then the canned lentils and my kid had some canned corn and peas. And actually it's enough, you, you don't need much. We are not very fruity people. We don't like to have fruits during the day. My husband and kid have a fruit smoothie in the morning that also has vegetables in it. And I have like a whole fruit in the morning, but during the day I, and also they, I don't like to eat fruits that much. And it's really easy actually to make your own matcha uh, while traveling. You just yeah need to bring your whisk and matcha powder. And then, of course, the conditions were not ideal. I didn't have this, the ideal bowl for making matcha, but I used whatever cup or bowl there was in, in an apartment. I boiled water, I let it cool to 85 degrees, I pour uh, the water on matcha powder, whisked it well, and then mixed it with uh, oat milk. And that's it, your matcha is ready to be enjoyed. Eating out is the most challenging part when you are on a special diet. To be honest, I would not have made the trip if I was on the cleanse, candida cleanse diet. It would be basically impossible to eat out. Most of the places use tons of vinegar, and it's not apple cider vinegar, and there's sugar everywhere and loads of oil. Not that it's uh, such a big problem on candida diet. I'm just um, eating oil-free, very low fat and not consuming extracted oils. Then the meals with added oils is really heavy on you and it doesn't taste good. Uh, let's start from the beginning. Eating out is a huge part of tripping, right? Uh, it wouldn't be the same if you weren't able to enjoy meals in restaurants or cafes. I always make the effort to research all the places uh, online before I go. I read some reviews, but they are always not accurate because people are different and while well, to some people like really oily and salty foods are excellent and for other people not, first place we went to in Riga, I hadn't been there before. It was a huge failure for me and for my husband has, as well. The food looked really, really beautiful, I'll show you here. But it was super, super oily. It was all fried uh, in oil. And my food was also super oily. Everything was fried and I was only able, I honestly, I, I wasn't able to eat fried stuff. I only ate the salad parts, like small parts there. So when we were finished, I was super hungry and we went, went to another place, a specialty coffee place that also offers a variety of uh, vegan um, options. And I took a ramen bowl, which was much, much better, but well, overly salty, unfortunately. And anyway, I don't know if, if it was for the meals or also some exhaustion from the drive, but I felt really bad this evening. I went to bed at 7.30, literally, and I slept through the night. I woke up at 7 a.m. Fortunately, I was all better the next morning and we headed to the gluten-free bakery I had discovered online the day before. We were there at 9 a.m. when they opened and lucky us because they told us that usually they have sold everything by noon. So the place uh, has become really popular. How do we find those places? For vegan places, I, I use Happy Cow app and I read the reviews. I also ask my Instagram followers sometimes to suggest something. And if I look for something really specific, like a gluten-free bakery, then I just uh, make a Google search. There are many blog posts or whatever. People have listed the best bakeries or coffee places. It's just um, yeah, I do my research and it pays off. When we lived in Barcelona from 2014 to 2016, it was our tradition to have coffee and bread, like a mid-morning snack. And whenever we are traveling now, I just can't really keep myself away from a good coffee. So during that trip, I had quite a few coffees. I shouldn't have because it came back to me and not in a good way. Uh, I'm sure you know that coffee makes your blood sugar fluctuate. As I'm very sensitive to those things, I kind of drained my body a bit. Uh, one corner of my mouth started to be quite, uh, how do I say, gentle. It didn't quite crack, but it went quite red. And to be honest, I'm still struggling with this corner of the mouth a bit now. 
Uh, it's healing. As you can see, it's, it doesn't show at the moment, but it comes and goes. So yeah, coffee. Keep away from coffee if you have blood sugar fluctuations. Well, I managed to keep away from fainting or feeling dizzy because I didn't go hours and hours without eating something. That's what saved me because we were basically walking from one cafe to another <laughs> and so we consumed uh, quite a lot. When you do experience setbacks or flare-ups during your trip it's very important not to stress out about it too much as you know stress contributes to candida symptoms or any other illness really i can tell you i've experienced this firsthand because when i stress out about a symptom and concentrate on it it will definitely get worse but when I put my mind at ease and try to relax, it's getting better. Just a side note here. We are quite slow travelers. We like to enjoy just the city. We don't do any touristy things. When we travel, we want to get the real feeling and we seek out places outside from the main town hall square, which is uh, usually the most touristy place. How we do that? It's quite simple, actually. You seek out where all the specialty coffee places are. When you have found out where's the biggest concentration of specialty coffee places, usually this is uh, like this hipster area. And in those areas, all the cities also tend to have many vegan places. So it's it's a win-win. These neighborhoods are for us. For example, in Riga, most tourists go to the old town area. This time we didn't even go there once. We took a hotel already in the area. We knew that it's kind of the hipster area where all the vegan places are, where there are organic stores and the specialty coffee places. In Bosnan as well. We have been to Bosnan quite a few times. It started when we were living in Barcelona and we we drove between Barcelona and Tallinn. Poznan was always a place where we stayed a night. Back then we only saw the old town and bits and pieces when we were driving through. But last year we happened to stay there for a week. We were really amazed how wonderful the city is. In Poland many cities have been ruined by World War II. Most of the nice architecture is gone. Poznan is an exception. Somehow they didn't get bombed that much during the World War II. They have maintained their beautiful architecture. I also like people in Bosnia very much. It's very relaxing, especially the area where we hung out, because it's the hipster area, everything is so chill and people are friendly and they speak English. I would really recommend Bosnia for a short city break or why not longer, because it's quite big actually. We try to take uh, quite short trips every day. We, we don't like to drive for eight or nine hours. We aim for four or five hours and so the next day after Riga we drove to Kaunas which is actually only three four hours and we didn't leave before lunch. A girl I know from Instagram who is also Estonian uh, recommended me another place the beginnings. We went to check it out and it was much much better. I got a really nice uh, like a lentil salad as you can see and we left for Kaunas. <laughs> It's also a place we have been staying for one night for, I don't know, five times at least. And this time we, we tried a place that was always closed the times we were there before. It was a really top-notch place. It was Indian, Asian, and as you can see, we, we took a mung bean stew and the mung beans were sprouted before cooking, so it was like eating home. It was really, really delicious. And the cake was very good as well. Not too sweet, quite light and really, really scrumptious. Watch part two for Poznan, Berlin, Warsaw. How we chose our accommodation and how to use it in your benefit when it comes to cooking your own meals.